Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Oh boy, another boring Saturday. Um, after Bitcoin rallied a little bit, we had a little bit of action yesterday, but today was just again boring sideways action, pretty much in line with what we've seen in the last uh, the last weekend. Um, <clears throat> most recently, I mean, the last last few months, we actually had quite interesting and exciting weekends. Seems like that's gone for now. Mm which is clear. I mean, we are now in a correction, right? So in a correction, there's just, you know, sentiment is different and so on. And um, the idea is that we are in this fourth wave. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to talk about the daily time frame again. Um, to, I do that typically once a day, covering the daily time frame. But um, as I explained, and we, we're going to talk about that in more detail tomorrow, the top here, okay, was either an A wave, a larger A wave, and we see a deeper B wave pullback, maybe into the region around 27k, or we are only seeing a shallow pullback. Um, but the, the thing is, they are two scenarios, they are both bullish. And in the white scenario, which is currently the one that's tested right now, um, it takes a break below 35k to invalidate it, or at least make it very unlikely and to clearly favor the yellow scenario with a deeper B wave. I'm not clearly favoring one of them. Um, they, are, they are both possible. Personally, I'd like to have that deeper pullback. Okay, so from a, from a personal point of view, I'd like to see a deep B wave. I think a lot of people would, would love it, would treat it as a gift, would um, accumulate Bitcoin again in a deep pullback in a, bull, in a bullish market, however, because even after that, we should get to all-time highs. Um, cause a lot of people might, might have missed out. Okay. Now, however, there's no need to get there for the market and it really takes a break below 35 K to, to confirm that. So I'm currently following the white count primarily, and I'm tracking it until it gets basically invalidated or breaks. Um, bottom line is we are in a correction. And if that is going to turn into a larger B wave, or if it's just a wave four, we, we will see, we're going to, maybe we can you know, see, see some further clues along the way. For now, this is clearly a, a five wave move down that we had from the 11th of January high. And, and that typically, in the, I mean, it's not a three wave move down, okay? We have a five wave move down. And we haven't had five waves down in a while on the Bitcoin chart. Now, that either means that this is, yeah, an ABC structure in wave four, ABC. And we should see after a three wave rally, another move down. That's typically what a five wave move indicates. Um, well, there's something is, it should come afterwards, right? And maybe that larger ABC is going to turn into um, an even larger B wave pullback. Yeah, And that's sort of what we're going to take a look at tomorrow in, in more detail on the daily time frame. So if you're new on the channel, make sure you subscribe so you're not going to miss any further videos and you will be able to um, yeah, take a look at the daily time frame with us tomorrow. But um, in the short term, not too much happened, really not very uh, eventful today. Just important to understand, I think that we had five waves down. Five waves down means this initial wave down, which we call an A wave in this fourth wave might indeed be complete. Doesn't mean it has to be complete, but the price broke above initial resistance. And that typically indicates that this A wave is done. And I highlighted to you in the previous video, as long as we're now holding above that $40,700 level and there's no sustained break below it, I'm leaning towards the idea that wave A formed the low and the B wave rally is now unfolding and should ideally take us to minimally 44470 I mean, I shouldn't say minimum because there isn't really a minimum target for... Um, for a B wave, which is again, a corrective structure within wave four. Um, however, I should add that um, obviously when I say minimum, it's sort of the first level that is ideally reached, okay? So ideal means what the, the most probable outcome. So it doesn't mean it has to be reached. It's not, it's not a prediction that I say this will happen. I say what should happen, okay? What should happen? That's all you can do, really, um, pointing out what a chart should ideally do so we can align ourselves with probabilities. And yeah, as I said, minimally, I would expect 44,470. That's the 50% retracement level there in the red box. 
it is sort of um, the first level that I would call a healthy B wave. Maybe even 45,500, that's the golden ratio there, the 61.8 retracement. And the 78.6 retracement there at 47k is relevant as well. That's the top of the box. B waves can even overshoot. B waves can even overshoot. Now you might say, okay, when we have five waves down, they shouldn't. Exactly, they shouldn't, but they can, okay? They can. Um, edit wave books will tell you they can't, but I can tell you um, that be pragmatic about it, you know, and I think the difference what you find in Elliott Wave textbooks and people who are very strictly following theoretical rules, um, the, the difference between what a flat correction is in which an overshooting B wave is possible and what a zigzag is, it's, it's overstated. Okay, so in, in reality, those boundaries blur in practice and it, you know, um, this is where practical knowledge beats theoretical knowledge like everywhere in life really um yeah where, where the street smart typically beats the book smart i just want to highlight be pragmatic about it you know um i sometimes see you know get comments where people say okay but the the rules say and yeah i mean it's just it, it's the same like with a wave two and a triangle right that nobody has seen so far a wave two that's a triangle that doesn't mean it wouldn't exist okay so it's it's we still need to be pragmatic about it that's very very you know just we have to do what works and I can tell you that B waves can overshoot. Okay, we've you know, we've seen it many times. In addition to that, I could be wrong about this assessment as a five wave move. Maybe it is a, th a three wave move and it's like a W X Y, okay, that could be the case, and then it can overshoot. But we can again it's it's all it all has to do with probabilities. But this is sort of the area where we would like to see the B wave actually get to. Yeah, and then let's see what happens and if we hold that orange support and tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more about the daily time frame. So I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe and also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Um, by the way, on Twitter, we post a lot of stuff about mindset, um, talk some talk about some, some price updates, Elliott Wave stuff, so feel free to check it out. Also, if you really like the content, then check out our membership. And if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500, as well as regular updates about stocks like PayPal, definitely moving at the moment, Tesla in an interesting spot and so on. Um, S&P just made an all-time high. Then yeah, feel free to check out our S&P 500 and stock service. You'll find the link in the description as well. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.